Are we talking about the wrong Florida Gator to the Lions in this draft? You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, everybody. It is a Friday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, Friday, April 31st into Saturday, April 1st. We are turning the page tomorrow to the month of April. That means the NFL Draft is in the same month, April 27th to the 29th. And the Lions, of course, possess the two first-rounders, two second-rounders. So much excitement, and we'll get into some of that today right here on Locked On Lions. Again, Matt Derry with you. Thanks for checking us out. On YouTube, subscribe, please, and watch us for free each and every day on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Locked On Lions, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page, and also, like I said, on YouTube. We appreciate you checking us out here on a Friday coming up on the show today. So much chatter about Anthony Richardson yesterday, working out down in Gainesville, had his pro day, but there was another uh, potential Lions draftee that maybe we're not talking about enough that we should talk about. Maybe a lot 18 or who knows even later. Uh, one of my listeners, one of you, gave me some stats on uh, Anthony Richardson that are not real great. Yet, we have a new mock draft today that has him going number one overall. All of that today right here on Lockdown Lions. Again, uh, thanks for uh, checking us out, making us your first listen. Final day of March heading into April. The owners' meetings are done. Now the Lions have an opportunity to uh, interview some more players, bring some more people into Allen Park for visits, etc. And so we're, what, 28 days away from the NFL draft. All right, so I love our audience, love the listeners, whether it's on the Facebook page, YouTube commenters, everybody, Twitter, of course, at Dairy Speaks. Uh, We talked yesterday a lot about Anthony Richardson and the pro football focus mock draft from yesterday with Brad Spielberger, where he had the Lions trading five draft picks, including a number one pick next year from six to three to move up to get Anthony Richardson out of Florida, the uh, athletic freak quarterback that didn't have a great career as a Gator, but is somebody that uh, everybody's talking about. And there's a big buzz about. And a lot of you wrote in to me yesterday and went ballistic. Like, why would the Lions trade number six, number 48, number 81, a first rounder next year, a fourth rounder next year to move up three spots to get a guy that's not even going to play for two years? And many of you were up in arms about it. But look, don't shoot the messenger. I was just relaying that mock draft from PFF and our buddy Brad Spielberg. And we'll get Brad on the show next week. But with where the Lions sit right now, it's not out of the realm of possibility because they've had such a good free agent season. They're bringing some guys back. They're bringing some new guys in. They're getting some guys back healthy. And even right now in Vegas, like I said yesterday, the Lions are the betting favorites to win the NFC North even before the draft even starts. But uh, Rick Birch, uh, one of our our listeners and somebody that uh, follows the show on our Facebook page, um, sent me these stats about Anthony Richardson. Let's just start here and we'll get into some Osiris Torrance talk and, and this mock draft in a second. But uh, Rick looked this up for us and we appreciate that. Anthony Richardson ranked, think about this for a second. Anthony Richardson ranked 121st in college football and FBS among college quarterbacks last year in completion rate versus pressure. 121st in the country. Not good. He ranked 108th in FBS with a clean pocket, so not under duress or any pressure. His 60.4% completion rate when not under pressure ranked him in college football. Not first, not fifth, not 10th, not 20th, not 50th, not 70th, not even 100th. 138th in college football. And versus pressure with linemen or safeties or linebackers or whomever bearing down on him. His completion rate at Florida 
Richardson's was 38%. 38%. This is a guy that completed, just if you just look at basic stats, like 50% of his passes. He had a pro football focus grade while under pressure of 48.8, which is really, really low. We do PFF grades every Monday during the season. We tell you about guys in the 90s and 80s and really rave about them. We're talking about a grade below 50%. 50 for pro football focus. Um, I'm not trading up to get Anthony Richardson. I'm not messing with the momentum that this organization has right now. I'm not saying that Anthony Richardson could not be drafted by the Lions. Heck, I've I've had people tell me, some people have told me, oh, Brad Holmes likes him. I've just heard that in passing. It's not like I've heard a source inside the building tell me. I've just heard people that I respect say, Holmes likes him. That doesn't mean Brad's going to draft him. Brad likes a lot of players. Maybe at six, they fill more needs. Maybe they add more defense. Maybe they do that at 18. Maybe they stay away from the quarterback position until the second round and grab a Hendon hooker. Or they wait till the third or fourth or fifth round and get somebody else. They're going to add another QB. It's not just going to be Nate Sudfeld. No way. But would they take Richardson at six? Would they move up to draft him? I just read the numbers that that Rick sent to, to me. I, that's, those are bad. There's no question this guy's athletic as hell and he can run and he can do all of these great things. But if you can't even complete passes in the college, at the college level and your numbers are so bad, especially with defenders bearing down on you, what are you going to do at the NFL level? And how long is it going to take? And if you're in a position like the Lions where you're competing now, are you really going to mortgage the farm to move up like that mock draft we had yesterday? Or would you even waste the number six pick on a guy that might not play for two years? Because if Jared Goff has a great year again next year and is a pro bowler again and is considered one of the top five, top three quarterbacks in the NFC, why would you be drafting his replacement when he is more than more than willing to continue to you know, carry the torch for you? He's young. This isn't like Aaron Rodgers when um, Jordan Love was drafted. Rodgers was 34. They're, you know, they love golf. But what if he's just such a, such a unicorn and could be the next great thing? It's a very good question, but I, those numbers stink. 121st among all college quarterbacks in completion rate against pressure, and then with a clean pocket, 108th in the country? Doesn't sound like a top five pick to me. Not at all. I want to tell you about a mock draft, though, that has Richardson going number one to the Carolina Panthers. We will do that uh, coming up next, but first I got to tell you about our friends at Built Bar. Folks, Built Bar March Madness is going on right now. They have a bracket. We know you got a favorite Built Bar or Built Puff, right? Now's your time to make it count. You go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know, I always talk about it. My favorite is the Cookies and Cream Bar. I just think it's so good. It's always solid. It's a winner, all right? And if you want the, the Lions to win, then you'll be voting for that bar too. Support your team. Support our show here on Lockdown Lions. Support your bar or puff. Plus, when you vote and go to... Uh, um, BuiltMarchMadness.com, you'll be entered in a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built Bars. All right? What makes Built Bars and Built Puff, Built Puff so good? They taste great. They're 100% doused in chocolate and high in, uh, high in proteins, low in calories. Just 130 calories, 17 grams of protein. It's fantastic. Run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now. Vote for your favorite Built Bar or Built Puff. Pick up a box while you're there as well, right there at BuiltMarchMadness.com. All right, so I saw this uh, mock draft today by our buddy Chris Trapasso at uh, CBSSports.com. I'm trying to get Chris on the show, but he's uh, ducking me right now. But he will get back to me. I DM'd him uh, last week. Chris, in his latest mock draft at CBSSports.com, has Anthony Richardson going number one overall at Carolina. He writes, writing this, out for, uh, writing this out for now, but Richardson has the most upside in the class, and the Panthers have a veteran coaching staff to aid his development early on. 
Bryce Young, number two to Houston. Will Anderson, number three to Arizona. C.J. Stroud falling to the Colts at four, which the Colts would love. Tyree Wilson at five. Then for the Lions at number six, Chris has the Lions selecting Christian Gonzalez. We haven't seen this in a while. The cornerback from Oregon. Quote, yes, the Lions added to the secondary and free agency, but that shouldn't stop them from grabbing Gonzalez here to play opposite uh, Je- of Jeff Okuda. Um, is Jeff Okuda going to even be on the field <laughs> for the Lions? Is that the future? I, I, the Lions have Emmanuel Mosley. The Lions have Cam Sutton. Um, adding another corner, and I like Christian Gonzalez, but I don't see the Lions doing that at number six. I just don't. Um, at number 18 for Detroit, Trapasso has the Lions taking Dalton Kincaid, the tight end from Utah. Quote, the Lions replaced TJ Hawkinson with a sure-handed Dalton Kincaid, further helping Jared Goff. End quote. Don't want to do the whole mock draft thing. I like Kincaid. I love Michael Mayer uh, even more. Believe in this mock draft, Trapasso um, does not have Mayer going. He has Kincaid being the first tight end coming off the board to the Lions at number 18. He has Jalen Carter falling all the way to number 20 in this mock draft and going to Seattle. Uh, Mayer, he doesn't have going until, (coughs) excuse me, um, the second round at number 38 to the Raiders. So this is very interesting. Oh, by the way, in this mock draft, it's a a three-rounder. I'll give you the second-round picks for the Lions. Number 48, Antonio Johnson, the safety from Texas A&M. Not sure why the Lions would take a safety there. Or take Johnson over Kalijah Kansi, who goes 49. And then at 55, the Lions would take Bryce Ford Wheaton, the wide receiver from West Virginia. That I could see. If Kansi is there at 48, the Lions are taking him. But what's interesting about this mock draft is that Osiris Torrance, the big tackle who could also play guard uh, from Florida, doesn't go until number 47 to the Washington Commanders. Why haven't we been talking more about Osiris Torrance? I saw Pete Prisco from CBS Today. Um, And let me get this uh, tweet if I can find it. I like what Prisco said. Pete Prisco said, Osiris Torrance is the best lineman in this class, period. He's a guard, but he can be a nasty right tackle, too. So powerful. His reps with Jalen Carter were fun to watch. Why have we talked so much? We've talked a lot about Anthony Richardson the last couple days, and a lot of people are. Not just to Seattle, not just to maybe Carolina or Indy or Houston or Detroit. But why hasn't Osiris Torrance's name been thrown around more to the Lions? Torrance took part in the pro day at Florida yesterday, along with Anthony Richardson. And Torrance said um, to reporters, or actually to Tom Pellicero from the NFL Network, quote, I'm the most dominant interior offensive lineman in the draft. And I feel like any team that will get me will get a day one starter and someone who's ready to play. Someone who's going to take it like a pro and give it all you got. Pellicero said that recently Torrance met with the Titans, Rams, Falcons, and Saints. What do we know? What do we know about Brad Holmes. What have we seen the first couple of years? Brad Holmes likes linemen. Especially defensive linemen. But Brad Holmes, I don't think, is going to be allergic to taking another offensive lineman because, number one, Jonah Jackson's going to be a free agent after this year. And I don't know if the Lions are going to be willing to pay the freight of $18, $19, $20 million a year for the very talented Jonah Jackson. Taylor Decker's getting up there in age. I still think he's got a lot of football left. But when you're talking about looking at the board, you're talking about playing Dan Campbell, smash mouth football. Why haven't we seen Osiris Torrance mocked more to Detroit? Halapulavati Vitae is apparently getting in shape again and feeling better and getting healthy. And he's under contract and will likely be the starting right guard for the Lions this season. But there's no guarantees there. Right? Graham Glasgow, I think, is more of a depth piece than anything else, but the Lions can say they can have a competition at right guard between Graham and, and, and Vitae. It's possible. But why wouldn't the Lions go get a versatile guy like Torrance, who's a very good guard, draft him at 18, maybe not play him right away, but there's going to be open spots. 
Vitae has one more year left. Glasgow's on a one-year deal. Jackson has one more year left. Brad Holmes loves linemen. Brad Holmes knows you win in the trenches. Why haven't we talked more about Torrance to Detroit? Maybe at 18. It's not going to be, he's not going to be drafted at number six. He's not good enough. And you see, as I said, in this mock draft from CBS Sports and Chris Trapasso, he's got Torrance going number 47. Yet I'm reading Pete Prisco saying this is the best offensive lineman in this draft. Hmm. Don't rule out Torrance to Detroit. And now the Lions have the capability of drafting for depth, drafting and stashing based upon what they've done in free agency and how they've built built up their depth all over the roster. Not something they could do a year ago. It's certainly not two years ago. Right? They were taking UDFAs off the street and playing them immediately two years ago, like Jerry Jacobs and others. So Osiris Torrance is a guy to keep an eye on. Big, physical, and I I could see the Lions taking him at 18. Or if somehow he dropped to 48, that would be incredible. Because you've got some people, including Pete, who I respect, saying this is the best offensive lineman in the draft. Um, the first offensive lineman taken in this mock draft was Paris Johnson, the big tackle from Ohio State, 6'6", 313, going number seven to the Raiders. He's more of a tackle than Torrance. Torrance could play tackle. But Torrance is more of an interior offensive lineman. And obviously, tackles are more at a premium for teams um, than guards are. Um, I mentioned this is a three-round mock draft. Let me give you those third, the third-round guys in a second here, and we will uh, do that. Uh, coming up next, but first, uh, I also got to tell you about FanDuel, baby, the official sports book partner of not only the NFL, the NBA, but also the Locked On Podcast Network. NCAA tournament this weekend, you got the Final Four going. You want to bet on these games? You're probably going to need to have some rooting interest in that first game with Florida Atlantic um, in the Final Four, right? And, uh, you know, I don't even remember who they're playing. I know it's Miami and UConn. Who's the fourth team? See, you got a couple of mid-majors going at it um, in that first Final Four. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, what are we doing here? You, you have no rooting interest? Fine. Easy enough. Um, you put some money down to FanDuel.com. That's because right now FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, just go to fanduel.com slash locked on and uh, sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the nets all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot at a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. San Diego State is the other team I'm talking about. All right, so in this three-round mock draft, so he's got the Lions taking Christian Gonzalez, um, Dalton Kincaid, the tight end. Second round, he's got the Lions taking Antonio Johnson, safety from Texas A&M. They don't need another safety. Um, Bryce Ford Wheaton, the wide receiver from West Virginia. And then in round three, the Lions are picking number 81. He's got Detroit taking running back Zach Charbonnet, the former Michigan Wolverine, uh, now UCLA Bruin. Steve Avila, the interior offensive lineman at 83, he has going to Seattle. Watch that name. All right. I know that, that in the Detroit sports scene, the last name Avila is not very popular. And hasn't really worked out very well here, especially a GMing a, a baseball team. But uh, Steve Avila is a guy the Lions like, and the Lions have worked out. And could be a depth piece at offensive line and the the successor down the road to Jonah Jackson or Halapulabati Vitae, the big guard from TCU. So keep an eye on him um, as well. Jaden Reed, the wide receiver, going in the third round to Buffalo at 91. DJ Turner from Michigan going 85 to the Raiders. Just a couple of other names that are certainly 
um, interesting there. A lot of wide receivers going in the third round. Hendon Hooker, uh, he has him going, um, Chris does, at number 72 in the third round to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, no quarterbacks, I believe, in the second round. That would be interesting if Hooker was there for Detroit at 81 in the third round. I would take him there if I were the Lions, if they don't take a quarterback earlier, obviously. So uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Another fun week here on Locked on Lions. I promise you we'll get you Brad Spielberger on and talk about that uh, trade he's got in his mock next week. Thanks for checking us out for free. Subscribe, please, and watch us each and every day for free right here on the Lockdown Lions YouTube channel. Have a great weekend, everybody.